1972, some 45 years ago, the federal government passed the Brooks Act. This was in response to a bidding environment where low bidding was leading poor quality, excessive change orders, and project delays. In 1988, the state of Colorado adopted similar legislation. Today, nearly all 50 states have adopted some form of the Brooks Act. Now, you're probably most familiar with price-based selection process. That is, the low bidder gets the contract. In the real world, this means the professional must charge lower rates, assign less qualified persons to service the contract, and spend less overall time on your project. Today, we're going to talk about the merits of qualification-based selection process for your procurement projects. The goal of this approach is to empower your agency to select the most qualified team for your capital construction projects and to do so at a fair market price for all parties. So what is QBS? QBS is a negotiated procurement process based on qualifications and demonstrated competence resulting in a fair market price for all parties. Now let's briefly discuss the process. The first step is to establish your criteria for the project. Now maybe it's experience in a geographic region, maybe it's experience with the type of project or size of project, maybe it's experience with innovative sustainable solutions. The point here is to establish your criteria for your project. Then with that information, you will issue your qualifications, your RFQ, your request for qualifications. After reviewing that responses, you'll go down to your short list of three to five responders. You'll rank those responders based on the criteria you established. Typically, agencies will use a spreadsheet with some sort of weighting points for the various criteria. And from that, you identify your first choice, your second choice, and so on. You then review your scope of work with your first choice team. You discuss the fees, what's included, what's not included, and the negotiation begins. The final price is based on the scope of work. Now this is important. If the negotiations is not reached successfully between your agency and the team, then you move on to your second choice and repeat the process. Now remember, this is not a bid shopping process. Once you pass on a team, you don't go back. So who uses QBS? Well, as we, as we just said, it is mandated for federal projects and Colorado state projects. However, you can choose to use QBS for any project, including city projects, county projects, special districts, and any privately funded project. Here's a quick little map to give you an idea of how many states in the U.S. are currently using QBS. And if you can see from the map, there's only three states right now that are identified as not having any kind of QBS statute in place. So why are we promoting the use of QBS? As architects, engineers, and land surveyors, we want to provide the best value for our clients. We all know that quality design leads to quality construction. When you look at the overall cost of a project, the design phase is only about 1% of the total life cycle cost. This comes from looking at a 40-year life cycle that determined that maintenance costs are nearly 10 times construction costs, while design costs usually are about 10% of the construction costs. Yet the design and the initial planning phases will have the largest impact and influence on the overall success of your project. Additionally, the use of QBS goes beyond obtaining the most qualified consultant. It also allows the owner and the consultant to develop the scope together. This helps create a partnership where all parties have the same project goals. Developing the scope in conjunction also reduces change orders because the scope is developed together as a team. Since fees are still negotiated, there are still fair and reasonable prices. 
finally, QBS provides flexibility to develop a scope that truly meets the client's goals. Projects that utilize QBS for selection of consultants also result in higher owner satisfaction. 93% of surveyed owners rate their project success as high to very high when QBS is, used, is utilized. As we mentioned previously, the use of QBS helps create a partnership between owners and consultants. When teams have a common goal and trust that each side is looking to move towards that same goal, the results are successful projects. Now, why do we advocate against bidding projects? How often have you developed your detailed scope prior to releasing an RFP? You know you have a roadway project or a new building project or maybe a planning study that needs to be completed. But exactly how you get there may be a little less known. What permits are needed? How can water quality be provided? What energy efficient features can be utilized? These are all questions that a qualified consultant can help you answer. Architects and engineers are creative by nature. We solve problems that require critical thinking and intellectual effort. We don't provide off-the-shelf solutions. We assess problems, investigate, analyze, and integrate. We create consensus and develop successful projects. So we briefly touched on the selection process before, but we wanted to highlight these additional items. An owner can select any of these criteria that are most important to them, or really any criteria that's the most important to them. Is there a spe specific expertise that is needed? Do you want a local consultant that can walk down the street when meetings are needed? Is the approach to, pro to the project the most important factor? These are all potential criteria, and once you select what is important to you, you can develop your scoring sheet to rate each proposal. As we mentioned, once you have selected the criteria that is important to you, you can then score the submitted proposals based on utilizing a standard scoring sheet. It is also important to have team members representing different departments that might be impacted by the project review the submitted proposals. The weighting of the criteria should be developed in conjunction with all reviewers in order to assure that the proposals are scored fairly and consistently. After the top three consultants are determined, the next step is to set up interviews when needed. It's also acceptable to select based on proposals alone. The goal is to select the consultant that understands your goals and can work with you to meet them. Finally, what we really want you to understand is that we're here to help you incorporate QBS into your procurement policy. Using QBS to select the most qualified consultant can help you avoid these pitfalls. When projects are bid before detailed scopes are negotiated and developed, projects have to be won or bought. This can be accomplished a number of ways, but the most common are listed here. Instead of completing detailed analyses, designs can be oversized as opposed to optimized. It can be in the easier design instead of the best design. It limits the abil ability of experienced engineers, architects, or surveyors to work on a project, resulting in limited review or oversight. It can also result in additional requests for change orders. So now we're going to briefly look at a couple of case studies around the state of Colorado. <coughs> Statistically speaking, QBS has recorded a very impressive high to very high satisfaction rate of 93%. Those, uh, that statistical number comes from an ACEC APWA survey that was done back in 2010. So the first case study we want to identify is the Galeton Fire Station in Galeton, Colorado. It's a single story, 13,000 square foot fire station. Using QBS, the selection process was able to focus on the primary criteria for that project. That is, a high profile, award winning design that is now a landmark structure for that community. Another case study we have is an office building in Fort Collins. It's a three-story, 38,000 square foot office building that is part of the Civic Center redevelopment. 
The primary criteria for this one was energy efficiency. The result was an energy efficient building that reduces energy usage, maximizes daylighting, and improves the thermal comfort of the building. Low bidders are not going to take the time to do energy efficiency studies required for such a project. Our final case study is in the city of Greeley. This project required an aggressive schedule in order to meet funding requirements. Selecting their consultant based on their innovative project phasing allowed the project to be completed on time and within budget. More specifically, the project team, including the owner and consultant, were able to work together to determine the project scope that would meet the city's goals. So much was that collaboration that when a permit was missed during scoping, the firm went ahead and shared the cost of that work. The City Public Works Department hopes to continue to use QBS in their selection of their consultants. The last topic that we're going to cover here um, are a few myths and facts uh, that are common misconceptions of the QBS process. The first is that there is a lack of accountability in the process. To the contrary, the QBS process follows all the standard procurement processes starting with public announcement of the RFP and finishing with documented records of the final consultant scoring. In reality, the accountability is higher with QBS than with selection by bidding. Selection by QBS allows for the most qualified consultant, not the consultant who buys the job. The next myth you'd like to address is that QBS decreases competition. The fact is, the QBS process rewards the best firm for the job. Niche market expertise, knowledge of local regulations, in-house capabilities, and greater involvement of the senior level management becomes the criteria for the selection. In other words, the design teams are competing over their qualifications and not over their profit margins. The third myth we'd like to debunk here is that QBS is burdensome for small communities. The fact is, the QBS process allows for continuing service contracts or project-specific contracts that can help communities. In other words, the design teams are now able to partner with you to ensure that you get what you need and not what somebody else has decided you need. So to recap, price-based selection is you get what you pay for. The incentive for the consultant becomes selecting the easiest solution, not the best design. Why? Because time is money. Again, the incentive for the consultant is use least experienced staff. Why? Because a smaller fee prohibits using the senior level staff. It will minimize exploring innovative and alternative design ideas. Why? Again, the smaller fee will minimize senior staff participation. The price results in minimizing details and letting the contractor fix it. Understand that issues fixed by the contractor in the field will result in change orders, and change orders will result in increased costs. And lastly, Price-based selection means minimum review of the construction documents. Again, this increases the likelihood of having to make corrections in the field, which again means change orders, which means increased costs. So in summary, encouraging innovation and greater focus, QBS encourages greater innovation and focus on your needs. It can produce significant life size life cycle savings for the user, it facilitates better conceived projects, fewer change orders, fewer surprises, it creates a partnership relationship between the owner and consultant. Everyone is happy, everybody's working together. And it maximizes the value to the owner and taxpayer 
both for the capital expense of the initial construction as well as the long-term operational costs. We encourage you to check out our website, qbscolorado.org. We have lots of information on it, and when you're ready to contest, contact us directly, we will provide free, unbiased help in using this process. We have in our library all sorts of samples and templates that you can use, and remember, QBS Colorado provides free, unbiased consulting for your project. And in closing, we want to list the agencies that are supporting Colorado QBS Coalition. And those agencies are the American Institute of Architects, the American Council of Engineering Consultants, the company, excuse me, the National Society of Professional Engineers, the American Society of Civil Engineers, and the Professional Land Surveyors of Colorado. We thank you for your time, and we are now going to open this webinar up for questions. Thank you, Colin and Linda. Um, I just wanted to point out, I feel like the case studies are really helpful. And we also had some conversations before today's webinar about the types of Main Street projects that QBS could be used for. And a few of those that we um, had talked about were streetscapes, signage, historic preservation projects, master planning, surveying and mapping projects, infrastructure projects, including utilities, um, sustainability, and also projects relating to your buildings downtown. And so I just wanted to point out that for a lot of the projects that our Main Street communities undertake as part of their downtown revitalization efforts, uh, QBS can be a process that can be applied um, for selecting contractors to, to take on those types of projects. Absolutely. Thank you for reminding us of that. <clears throat> so I have a follow-up question to that effect. Sure. Um, is there kind of a minimum project budget that you would say you want to meet before you undertake the QBS process? Or can the projects be really quite small, like signage design or something like that? Honestly, there is no specific minimum budget that um, would benefit the use of QBS. As professional engineers, um, or as I am a professional engineer, and I know as architects and land surveyors, we realize that we want to provide what the city or agency wants to have. Um, I know there are some consultants that will not look at a job if there is a, uh, a price-based component of it because of the fear that they are going to not fully be able to describe the scope and be able to work with the client to, um, to develop that scope and, and provide what the, the client really wants. So I think any project is a, uh, is a great opportunity to use the QBS system. And you still negotiate the fees with the selected consultant. You just have to, a better understanding of what the project is before those fees are developed. Uh, that's right, Tom. Uh, you might find in smaller communities on smaller projects, uh, sometimes you have set up uh, continuing contracts and some, some projects are issued under a purchase order. That would be kind of a different situation. But anything else that you would consider uh, reviewing uh, various teams for, for the project, uh, QBS should be used for. And, and no project is really too small. Uh, if you are in a selection process, no project is really too small to be using QBS. And you mentioned even as a, uh, a purchase order, really, if you have a, a short list or an IDIQ of some sort, that's really the first step of a QBS process there, too. Absolutely, yeah. And what is an IDIS? IDIQ. IDIQ. Is, <laughs> is indefinite, con uh, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity type of contract. It's, it's an on-call type of contract uh, that the, the federal governments are called IDIQs. A lot of cities, uh, regions call them on-call contracts. So it's basically where you've shortlisted a number of consultants that, you, that have given their proposals to show what their skill sets are in order to provide you the, the designs and, and um, other uh, expertise that, they're, that they have available. Got it. 
So for everyone on the phone and with us via Adobe Connect, feel free to chime in and just speak up and ask your question. You can also type it into the chat box and I will read it aloud for our presenters. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You said you also provided some consulting to folks wanting to use CBS and you can go to your website and take a look at the other resources that are there. Could you also help uh, a community or do you provide help with the community in developing that scope initially and who should be on the team to actually rank and evaluate people that get on a job? What's the level of what you guys can and can't do? CBS is really available um, for, for all levels. Um, we have templates and samples that if a community wants to kind of uh, do it themselves, so to speak, um, they can follow our templates and samples. Uh, sometimes communities will, will have us uh, proofread their, their announcements and, and we can give them some feedback on some of our thoughts. In the end, we're not dictating to the community what to do. We're just uh, providing our expertise and experience based on, on other projects. But we, we are there, uh, any, I mean really, any question that comes up along the way, if, if you're wondering about who you should, should include on the team, um, we, how to weight the uh, criteria, how to set up, we have sample spreadsheets of, of criteria and how, how you would do the weighting of the various criteria in your evaluation. We have all those resources available and, and we're more than happy to provide them uh, absolutely at no cost to the community and, and really we are, we pride ourselves on being unbiased. We're not affiliated with any particular uh, firm or organization. We're an independent organization and give you really free unbiased uh, help in, in getting you through the process. And if it's your first time doing it, then you know, you probably do need a little help. So we are there for you. And we also understand that in a lot of ways we tend to be uh, preaching to the choir. Uh, I think everyone wants to have the best team available for their project. I think some communities feel like their procurement side might be like, well, we have to use low bid. And that's not really the case, but a lot of people fall back to that understanding. So we're also happy to be able to provide information to your procurement side or to potentially um, anybody else that you would um, want to maybe get a little more education on the QBS process. Uh, typically, it, it's not a requirement to use low bid, even though some people think it is in their organization just because that's the way that it's been done. So I think providing additional information, not just to you, but to some others in your um, agencies or in your um, city's uh, entities uh, can be beneficial to the overall process because there is more than just you in, in, in the project selection. And maybe what we can do is send a follow-up email to everybody who joined us today with a link to the toolkit, your contact information, um, and a link to the QBS Colorado Coalition website so that they can find those resources. Yeah, that would be great. What other questions do we have out there? Feel free to speak up. If you do have follow-up questions and you don't want to ask them right now, um, feel free to send them my way and I can send them to the presenters and we can include those um, and get those addressed. Is there anything else that we have for our presenters for now? I just think of one you just brought up. Um, is it often that procurement departments in some of our, our towns are mandated with it being the lowest cost and not necessarily the best? And is there statistics or numbers that show using QBS with your 95% satisfaction rate in the long run, how much money that can save over the long term? Well, this presentation is a bit of a shorter presentation than, than we've done in other cases. We, we want to condense it to a half hour over the lunch period, including the question and answer. So. There are some slides that we cut out, one of which was the reduction in change orders associated with the QBS process, which um, lowers change orders by, I believe, 7% uh, 
um, compared to projects that don't use um, don't use the QBS selection process. Uh, that was kind of the second half of the question. The, the first half, I, I think a lot of procurement agencies go fall back to using the, the, the price-based selection. They feel like, well, if this is the price versus this is the price, then that must be the lowest price. But we all maybe have seen that picture of a yacht that has the original contract is the dinghy and change order is the actual yacht itself. Um, a lot of companies that are like, oh, it's, uh, I'm going to bid exactly what they're asking for right here, knowing that, well, they're going to need this information down here, and we'll, we'll m make some money back over there, where we might lose some on our original bid because we're bidding the project, as opposed to really what QBS, the goal is, is to get a team together that is working towards a common goal. And, and that's where you get your reductions and change orders and your, your, your common goals and more successful, successful projects. Yeah, one, one thing to remember is that uh, design services is a service. It's not a commodity. And the notion that um, it's the same with everyone, a, a fixed price, if, I, if I, I'm just going to get the lowest price because it's the same no matter who I go with, the reality is it's not the same whoever you go with. It's, it's not a com commodity. It's, it's a service. And a, a saying that we say an awful lot is you get what you pay for. And if you pay for less service, then you're going to get less service. Um, and the idea is, is not to promote uh, unnecessary service, but for the community to identify what is the level of service that they, that they need rather than selecting the lowest bid, which may be a, a much less service than, than they really had hoped for. And that's the whole point when we say that, that you select the best qualified and then you negotiate it. And everybody is on the same page as to what's being provided and what's being compensated for in that service. And I wanted to clarify one item. That was a, a reduction of uh, seven percent on the number of change orders. I believe the number was um, from ten percent down to three percent, which would be the reduction of seven percent change orders um, when using QBS. Thanks for that clarification. Well, it's a few minutes past twelve thirty, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up.